When you talk about superheroes at Wake Forest, Randolph Childress is right at the top of the list. His performance at the ACC tournament was incredible. To score 107 points in three games, I mean, good guy. And it's not just the fact that he scored a lot of points. I mean, the way he did it was just crazy. Wake had not won an ACC title in 33 years. Duke looks very sure of themselves out here. Tim. We came out in that game, the first round against uh, Duke, and found ourselves in a significant deficit. Buck is good and one. Two senior centers given Wake Forest fit so far in this ballgame. We left our game in Winston-Salem. Didn't have it with us. I'm just trying not to be embarrassed to lose is the, is the, the first game as the number one seed. And we're losing bad. I mean, we're headed to a 30-point loss. They're getting a licking up to this point. This place is rocking. 31 to 13, Duke. 8.33 to go, and Odom gets the timeout. That walk from the baseline to the bench, I was just like, no, this, this can't happen. You know, I was so upset, I was just angry. Coach said what he wanted to say, and Dave hears this voice, that's enough, and it was Randolph. Okay, coach, just give them to me and let me have them. So he assembles the five that were in the game. I walk up there going to say my last command to him, and he said, coach, I got this. I got it. I'm like, coach, put four guys on the floor that's gonna compete. I got the rest. And if you're not gonna compete, sit down. Don't get in the game. There you see Duke coming out with a 2-3 zone, changing things up. I didn't expect what happened next would happen. I, I didn't. Randall, he's been about the only answer so far for Wake Forest. Childress for three more. It's a 9 nothing deep run since the timeout. Right now, Wake is on a tear. After the timeout, it's the most amazing eight minutes and 33 seconds of basketball I have ever seen. Childers hits 10 straight shots. They go from 31-13 to end of halftime 46-45. And then, of course, you know, Randolph scores 20 in the second half like it's nothing, and it's a 40-point day. I think it was a necessary game for us, and I think it gave us momentum going into the next game. Well, everybody's in their seats waiting for perhaps a performance like we had yesterday. Randolph with 40 points. Virginia game was different than the Duke game because Virginia was a much better team. You knew what you were going against. It was going to be a physical game. It's going to be 40 minutes. You knew it'd be close. I remember catching the ball, and it was in front of Virginia's bench. And I just remember looking at my finger. I felt like it broke. And it just, I heard it pop, and I looked down, and I couldn't get it straightened out. And I'm thinking, man, this is going to be bad. Well, the fingers are the key right at the moment. Honestly, I didn't know if it was broken. and I didn't know if they'd tell me I couldn't play anymore. I'm a senior, so I was really trying to downplay it as much as I could because I didn't want them to make a decision. He can't play. I said, that's it for you for the day. Get me in. <laughs> it was no injury, no nothing that was going to stop him from finishing the games. Yeah, but look at him. He wants to come back now. Did it make a difference? Oh, this is way outside. Oh, right. Childress. No, he's still knocking down threes. Here he is from beyond the arc again. He had an off day. He only scored 30. Childress, yes. Wake Forest advances to the ACC championship game. So in two games, he's got 70 points, sets up a championship game against North Carolina. When Randolph Childress gets in the zone that he's capable of entering, you simply cannot defend him. That has to be a concern for Dean Smith today. Randolph was not going to let Wake lose it. They had beat us early in the year in Winston. I remember reading a comment, and Jeff said, if we kept it close, they would choke. I was pissed. This guy said I choked. Are you kidding me? Like, I've never choked. In my life, are you afraid? I'm like, we got to get this. Jeff McGinnis, good player, maybe one of the best players. So it comes down to the championship game. Those two had a thing going up in words exchange. And in that heat of the moment, Randolph wasn't going to lose. I remember having it going, hitting shots. And he kept pressing me, kept pressing me. And it's one of those things you, you've practiced a million times in the gym. Getting you one place, you know, going and then crossing you back and either shooting or just ripping and going. Childress. Do you believe that? He said, come on, get up. I'm going to drill it. I didn't think much of him falling at all. It wasn't my intent. It was just about, this is the guy that made the comment that said I choked. Like, are you kidding me? Like, get up. 
Like, come on. I was about maybe six or seven feet from him when he, when he did all of this, and I could just hear uh, Dean Smith saying, he's taunting, he's taunting. That's when you know he was in the zone, and I knew that we had a real good chance of winning. Childress for three more. We have seen some outstanding performances in this ACC tournament. Came down to an even game, so we go to overtime to decide it. I said, if we just get the ball to Randolph, we're still going to win. Randolph hits a shot that uh, is significant in Wake Forest history. Ten seconds left. Back to Childress. It's his game double now. Team again. Childress. Yes! No, he didn't miss. All nine points in overtime. Oh, by the way, let's just throw in the game winner. And Randolph Childress with 37 points becomes the all-time leading scorer in one ACC tournament. It was a special moment in school history right there. Wake Forest wins the ACC championship. How historical was it? It's the best performance we've seen in the ACC tournament ever. It was 107 points in three days. The record isn't just mine. It's my teammates are every bit a part of, of, of that record. That weight was small, but uh, we're capable of, of, of playing on the biggest stages. And that's what the tradition is for me.